Hello and welcome back to On the Workbench. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Ambient Weather WS1550 IP Observer Internet Weather Station and some accessories that I got to go with this. This was received as a Christmas gift and it's been interesting if you look at the packaging here. You know, there's a couple of the accessories here I do have. A couple other accessories that I know Ambient Weather has come out with that I also have over here on the side that did not come out with it originally. Follow along and we'll see how this sets up and what we get out of the box and what other parts we may need to get this weather station going. So the first thing about this station here to uh, bring up for discussion is the fact that this actually does have a solar panel on it. That was one of the big things about this weather station that drew me to it. And so this will actually mount outside of my house. Obviously I'm inside right now doing the unboxing. And now coming out of the package, we've got our first box. So we've got some manuals. Set that aside. We've got a cable, an ethernet cable, cardboard. We've got the sensor array. We've got the wind measuring cups. Our IP observer module. This is what's gonna connect it to the internet. We've got some mounting hardware. a wind vane, power cord, lid for our rain cup, and a little service card indicating not to return it, but to please call ambient weather. So the first part of this is we've got our main sensor array. This is the guts of the system. It's got kind of this triangular three-sided setup here. We've got first got a little sticker here that says insert battery into batteries into the battery compartment, remove the sticker, and to press the reset button to start the sensor operation. This does have a bubble level here on top to make sure you get it level. Then we've got a couple ports here on the side for adding a couple accessories over here. The first thing here is we have our tipping bucket rain gauge. And then to go with that, we have this little cone that should just Go on and twist into place like that. So then the rain will go through the little cone here and then tip the little pot and tip the little scale there indicating that the rain was received. Earlier I mentioned about batteries. There was a door at the bottom here that if we slide this off, this is where the batteries go. It takes two AA batteries. However, the batteries are sort of a last resort because of the solar panel on the top. And then it also gives you a helpful indication of which way is north, so the rain cup should be facing north. And then on the back two sides of this, we're going to have a spot for an anemometer to give us our wind information. And our wind speed. So then we've got this vein here. And then we'll place these cups here on the left side, like that. And then on the other side, and this is keyed. So let's see which way, if you can see the back there, let's see the little keyway. And currently it looks like, there we go. So that is keyed. So now we can track our wind direction and our wind speed. There's also a little optical or solar sensor here on top. We'll set that aside and then this is designed to sync with the internet and communicate wirelessly with this module that you place inside your house. This is a lot smaller than I was expecting this to be. And so there's a couple other options for this weather station where it has a wall control module that then connects over Wi-Fi. I kind of like the hardwire connection. It's just one less thing to worry about. And so this will basically will sit on a router that I have in my living room. And then we have a power cord here to power that up. This is really nice and small and out of the way and very uh, inobtrusive. And then we'll have a little hardwire connection to the router right here like that. So that's great. Now, one of the issues that has come up with this device that is a known issue related to the top of the rain cup, and that's where our first accessory comes in, this is the WS2902 Rain Spike Kit. 
And so with this, we've got a couple of metal bands. What looks like some nails. And then we've got these little plastic clips here. I think we'll get the nails. See, there's several of these here. And so the nails or the nail like pins. Let's see if there's one more left. I think I got it all. We'll then use these metal bands to go around the top to then help keep birds from sitting on top of here. A couple extra bucks, I think, well invested just to keep birds away from trying to use that as a pedestal. We now have the rain cup with the spikes fully set up here. A couple little things here. It recommends actually bending these over towards the center. And upon a little further investigation, there is a positive click that holds that in place. I feel much better about that with that positive click. And now on for installing the batteries. We're going to flip this over. And there's the battery door here at the bottom that we're just going to slide off like this. And because I don't want to have to service this very often, I'm going to be using what I think are probably the best batteries you can buy, and that's the Energizer Lithium batteries. And this is going to take two AA batteries that are not included. We'll slide that into place. Like that. You see there's a little red light right here that just came on. We'll slide the battery door back over the top. There we go. We'll flip that over. And now following these instructions here, Remove the sticker and press the reset button to start operation. And in this case here, the reset button is right over here. It says reset. You may need a little uh, needle nose or a small screwdriver. It uses a little small precision screwdriver and we'll press this. Hopefully that's enough. We'll have to check that in a later step. See if we got that all the way correct. One other bit with that rain gauge, it came with two of these stainless steel straps. You only need one. The other one, I guess, is just in case you break it or accidentally over tighten it too far. The tensioning on this is a little bit funny in that this isn't quite as, it's not serrated like a normal plastic zip tie is, but it's stainless steel. So I appreciate their thought with going the extra mile with providing a stainless steel zip tie. At any point, we can set that aside because we're not going to need that if we do it correctly the first time. And now on with the next two boxes. The next box here is the WH32B outdoor temperature hygrometer sensor. So if you get this piece to go with it, we're going to end up with a little device like this. And this package notably does not come with any instructions. It's a little weird. Just take this out of the packaging here. We got a couple of screws and a zip tie. And this is also going to call for two AA batteries. And we'll take the plastic off of the screen. Just like that. And so this is calling for temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor couple mounting screws and a zip tie and then WH31B temperature and humidity sensor almost identical peeled off better looking at these side by side hopefully that gets rid of the glare we've got temperature humidity and pressure on the left and temperature and humidity here on the right And so then you see there's just a little keyhole at the top that can hang those in. And this will provide an extra, an extra uh, temperature and humidity sensor for indoors. And then the last bit of kit that I bought as an accessory is this wireless. And this is relatively new from ambient weather as far as I'm, as far as I'm aware. This is a PM 2.5 or particulate matter less than 2.5 air quality sensor. This is designed to... Uh, measure the the air quality. It's a little bit pricey by comparison, but I thought it might be interesting to go ahead and do this. So notably out of here, there is a nickel metal hydrite, basically AA battery that's rechargeable. It comes with this. 
And on the back here, you can see it has the sensor, the USB cable, and the rechargeable batteries. And the USB cable on here is going to be micro USB. Taking this out of the package here, you can see we've got our sensor and our battery compartment door. We have an ID number here that goes with setting up the sensor. There's our micro USB port right there at the bottom. We'll go ahead and put in these batteries. These batteries are BPI, if that brand name means anything to you. See there's a little red light there. And on the top you can see there's a solar panel here intended to be able to provide charging on the fly. So hopefully the batteries need minimal maintenance. And to be able to monitor the air quality. This does come with a guide as well for how to set this up and use this. And I think that covers that for now. I'm going to need to figure out how I exactly I want to configure this to get the setup here. It looks like I'm going to need to have a few more AA batteries for these extra sensors. These have the little dip switches here to be able to uniquely identify these. This device allows for one of these uh, temperature pressure sensors and allows for multiple of the temperature humidity sensors for the indoors. You could have one in your basement, one on your main floor. You could hide one in your attic or wherever you want to monitor the temperature in your house or your garage or anywhere else around your property. A few final little notes about the setup on this device. First of all, on the anemometer and the wind vane, there is a little set screw on the side that goes in with a Posi Drive number one screwdriver. They do not include that in the kit. A small Phillips will work, but it is a Posi Drive screw. So if you've got a Posi Drive driver, this is another excuse, or if you don't have a Posi Drive screwdriver in your household, then this is another excuse to buy one. If we flip it over, we've got the rings here to install this on something like a galvanized fence post. And these bolts here tighten down with, a, with the almost ubiquitous 10 millimeter socket. Uh, the ideal one that is probably going to be a semi-deep if you've got that. Otherwise, just go with a deep well. Maybe you can get away with a shallow, but a semi-deep would be the ideal one there. And then you're going to have to use the user manual. It's very easy to follow to set up the uh, configuration. You have to plug in the IP observer module into your router, find the IP address of it, and then make sure everything's in range, and then it'll all kind of self-populate. For me, it's set up relatively easily and pretty quickly with almost no pain. And the final step for me is just going to be able to mount this outside. Otherwise, everything's working. Set up an account with ambientweather.net. And then you can integrate this with your Google, with Google Assistant. Uh, if this, then that, and plenty of other uh, setups. And then you can also then create a weather station on weatherunderground.com. And so you can be reporting your data through Weather Underground. And then have access to the local uh, network on Weather Underground which is great as well. One final bit of note, uh, when you go to set this up outside, pay attention to the north arrow that's located between the optical sensor and the solar panel. That this does indicate north, and that needs to be facing north, obviously, because that's going to be coordinating for the direction that the wind is coming from when it tries to tell you that the wind is from north, south, east, west, or whatever direction that it's from. And so just make sure you have that facing north, it's not very obvious on here to do that, but just double check that and so that the rain gauge is facing to the north. And with that, all you have to do now is just screw this onto your pole, use your 10 millimeter socket, tighten it up, secure it, and you should be good to go. You may, and I'm gonna say may, wanna spray this down with just a little bit of silicone to help protect it uh, from winter weather or freezing rain. That's one of my big concerns is how well is the rain part going to be able to deal with freezing uh, rain and water. I don't really want that to freeze inside and crack. Only time will tell how that'll hold up. I might spray mine now with a little bit of silicone, but as it is, this is already kind of slick here. And so I would think that just given the mechanism on the inside, the way that it's a little tipping bucket, that's probably not going to be apt to hold much, but still there's a chance this, uh, this could freeze over 
I'm not sure exactly how well that will happen or if there'll be any issues with that. If there are, I'll note that later in this video or put in the comment below and pin it. And if you found this video useful and interesting, give it a thumbs up. Look forward to seeing you back here for another video and have a great day. Bye.